And finally, new rule historians have to stop telling us everything's going to be okay because we've been here before. With all due respect, we haven't. You, you can't watch a day of cable news anymore without seeing prominent historians telling us, calm down, America has survived bad times. And we have the Civil War, the Depression, Pearl Harbor, 9-11, disco. <laughs> but trust me, my historian friends, I've read your books on American history, and this guy ain't in any of them. George W. Bush was a walking disaster area, but he believed in democracy, so much so he tried to export it to Iraq. Whereas Trump believes in oligarchy so much, he's trying to import it from Russia. <laughs> yes, previous presidents declared war, but never on reality. You gotta admit, that's kinda new. And look, I love historians. I watch the History Channel like most guys watch Pornhub. In college, I majored in history. And who didn't love high school history? There was always a 50% chance the teacher would be hung over and just show a movie. <laughs> but stop trying to calm us down right now. You know when it's okay to yell fire in a theater? When it's on fire. <laughs> Last week, Last week, Trump's son-in-law said of Trump, he's a black swan. A black swan is something we've never seen before that defies all previous expectations. That's what we're dealing with, a black swan with a mushroom penis. <laughs> and when I look at the Trump family, it feels a lot like it has a lot less in common with this family than with this family. This attitude that America's like a cat, it always lands on its feet, I don't buy it. I don't buy that just because something didn't happen before, it can't happen now. Rome didn't fall, and didn't fall, and didn't fall, and then it fell. Gonorrhea has been around for a long time, and we could always kill it with penicillin, but now there's drug-resistant super gonorrhea, and we can't. Was incivility bad in other times in our history? I'm sure it was. I've heard the anecdotes. I know that during a brawl in the House chamber in 1798, Congressman Matthew Lyon of Vermont tried to beat Roger Griswold of Connecticut with a pair of iron tongs. I don't give a shit. <laughs> this isn't two gentlemen slapping each other in the face with gloves. This is a slow-moving coup. This is the head of the federal government calling the American citizens that make up the free press the enemy of the people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, here on our final show before the election, I want to talk directly to the millennials and to Generation Instagram, or whatever they're calling you. <laughs> we need you. Yeah. We need you like you need your anti-anxiety meds. <laughs> Not to protest or to post something. We need you to actually vote. Yeah. Because historically, you are the least likely to. I get it. You're young, and young people aren't big on planning for the future. That's why we have laser tattoo removal. <laughs> but we need you to turn out in unprecedented numbers, and we know you can. Look at the March for Our Lives. That's... That's how you should approach voting this year, as a march for your life. It's your future, not mine. But to paraphrase the farmer's insurance guy, I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. <laughs> And to paraphrase the Allstate guy, you're not in good hands. <laughs> Getting this moment wrong and not participating will be just like your student loan debt. It will haunt you for the rest of your life. 
Getting this moment wrong, you can say goodbye to reproductive rights, to legalize pot, possibly to gay marriage, and definitely to what's left of the environment. If Trump wins, he will cast it as a complete endorsement of his most undemocratic behavior. If you're 18 and that happens, you stand a very real chance of not living in a Western-style democracy for part or all of your life. Yes, it can happen here. If historians want to look at an example of we've been here before, look at this picture. This isn't Nuremberg in 1934. It's Madison Square Garden in liberal New York City in 1934. And here's the garden in 1939 after Hitler had already done some pretty awful things, and yet 22,000 Americans were cheering him on. I'm not saying Trump is Hitler. Hitler volunteered for the army. <laughs> but Trump is a wannabe dictator, and he does have a knack of getting what he wants to be. So mark Tuesday, November 6th down. Mark it on your calendar like you're Brett Kavanaugh planning to get shit-faced. <laughs> because Tuesday is winner go home for democracy.